Welcome to the Riot Podcast, where we have practical discussions on how to share your faith, see the news from God's eyes, and answer some of faith's hardest questions. Welcome to the Riot Podcast. This is Bob Shoneman alongside Pete Robertson. Hello. 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 How is Pete Robertson today? I am. AKA Mac Daddy. I am Bob Shoneman, AKA uh, Boblicious. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we doing also known as? You don't like that, right? Boblicious? I don't care. You don't care? No. I, don't. I like it. I think it stuck with me. Okay. What was that? Jeff? Jeff, Jeff came up with Jeff that, right? If you're that. listening, Jeff. Yeah, thanks for the thanks, Bobalicious. Thanks for the Bobalicious. Yeah. I can't get away from it now. Yeah, Mac Daddy came from my wife, though. Yeah. yeah. See, that's better. Yeah. That's better. She's been saying that for... Nothing personal, ever. Jeff, but yeah. Yeah, many many of you don't know my real name is actually Mac. Yeah, so people don't know that. But big, now they do. Big Mac. Yeah, yeah. Two all beef special patties, lettuce, cheese, pickles, yeah. onions on a sesame seed bun. Yeah, I used to memorize that. That was pretty good marketing that yeah. 50 years later, I can still remember oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, and they still use it on some things. That's, that's crazy. This week I went to, um, we went out um, to start the car and it, and it didn't start. And so I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh. we have one car. What do we do? And so I panicked a little bit. To walk? I did pray. I mean, I, first thing I prayed is the Lord in the name of Jesus, let the car start. So we laid hands on the car. Yeah. Didn't start. So like, all right, Lord, you punished me. And so it I, wasn't in his will. No, it wasn't that. And so I just like, okay, what's the next step? So then I have a mechanic friend that I call. And then he's like, okay, well, this is what it is. Da, da, da. And so we started trying to fix it. And it says, jump it. You know, maybe it was the thing. And it didn't the turn thing? over. You mean the battery? Battery. Yeah, yeah that thing. The thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it didn't, fl- it didn't jump. So I was like, okay, we did all this and it didn't work. So he's like, well, maybe it's like mechanical or maybe there's something electrical or something like that. So I'll come by on Monday. I was like, well, no, 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 it's Saturday. I need an hour. He's like, well, and I go, what am I going to do? And so we're like, okay, well, you need a car, you know, because I don't have another car. So I said, Travis, what are you doing right now? And he's like, ah, you know, Travis is my daughter's, uh, I guess we can call him boyfriend. And uh, (laughs) you struggled on what to call Travis there. I almost said something else that I should not say on air. So I let that go. Um, I'll tell you afterwards though. And um, it is funny and it's not bad. So don't read into that. And um, anyway, so uh, we went to the, the, he dropped us off at the get the car rental and we're sitting and waiting in line. And uh, finally we get up, but the, the people in front of us are arguing with this lady and they're going crazy. Da, 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 and the other person's arguing with this lady. There's two people in front of me. And I'm like, okay, this is weird. So there's like, there's like bad mojo going on in this place, bad vibe. And so we get up there and um, the lady says, okay, da, 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 da. she goes, oh, well, do you have, um, do you know that you're a Florida resident? So I was like, yeah. She goes, well, it's going to be a $2,000 deposit. I was like, wait, what? what? $2,000 deposit. She goes, oh yeah, we have to put a deposit down because you're Florida residents and we're not going to give you unlimited miles. We're only going to give you a hundred miles per day. And I was like, what? She goes, well, the main dealership, the main ones, Hertz and Enterprise and all that, they don't do that, but they also charge you a lot more for Florida residents. Da, 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 da. And I was like, okay. And so we, um, I was just smiling and this lady was just beat up, just absolutely beat up. So immediately in my mind, I went, well, I'm not going to argue this and I'm not going to fight this and I'm not going to try to understand this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to love on this lady. And so Christine was there. And so we just started loving on her. And and then something else happened. She said that, oh, by the way, because you're a Florida resident, also we have to charge you an extra $89 um, just because you're a Florida resident. I've never heard any of this. And uh, she says, well, everybody on this trip, and we were on Narcuzzi Road, everybody on this trip, every every car dealership, every rental car does the same thing, she says, because they offer a little bit cheaper prices. So I was looking for the cheapest. And so that's where I came about instead of actually going to the airport right. well, and yeah. you know, having to go through that. So anyway, so that's what she did. And I'm just still smiling, you know, and I'm looking at her <laughs> and then she goes, okay, I'm going to go get your car now. So she runs out and brings up the car and then she goes, well, let me do this. And then um, she goes, uh, I forget. She said something. Oh, then she says, I said, well, I have my own toll road. So I'll put that on to do the toll road. She the goes, oh, no, 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 it won't work. I was like, what do you mean I don't want to work? She goes, no, we'll charge you $25 a day if he does that. We have a little thing that's triggered in and that you can't use your own toll road. Oh, my goodness. And, I, and I'm still smiling. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm looking You're at a better her. man than I am, Pete. I and, would have lost it by now. And I'm looking at her. <laughs> and I just like, all right, Lord, we're going to just we're going to just take this. And so I went out of my way to bless this girl. And then we prayed for her. And, and uh, 
I just, I felt her pain and she kept saying over and over again, I just work here. I, this is their rules. This is the way they're set up. I just work here and I'm doing the best and every single person I deal with. And anyways, I looked at the reviews before. And so I, I shared with my wife before I said, listen, they have horrible reviews. Everybody says that they do this and so forth. I did not see all this coming. I, there was just a lot more that they did not show in the reviews. So I knew that it was going to be bad going in. So I prepared myself before I got there. And uh, I said, we're just going to go be a blessing. And so, so you didn't get them as our show sponsor. No, 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 no. I, I would highly recommend spend the extra money, go to Hertz, <laughs> go to, go Enterprise, to Avis. <laughs> That's just my encouragement to you. Don't use the off-brand rental car places. Pay the airport surcharge. It's worth it. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit extra, but you know what? It's, you don't have those headaches. It's like going on Spirit Airlines versus oh, Delta Airlines. Oh, I've heard nightmares. I've, I've never done it, but I've heard never nightmares. doing Spirit again. Sorry, Spirit. I'm not trying to be mean. It was just the worst experience I've ever had. <laughs> Ever <laughs> fine. Um, uh, but anyway, so that was that. So, anyways, so we got back and we went and got finally had the car. So, we were going to go get a battery. So, we went and got the battery and we picked up the battery and was like, okay, cool. We're going to put it in the battery. Listen, I put in lots of batteries in my time. Sure. So, I know how to put a battery. That's it. Just uns it. unscrew a couple balls, put it back on. Piece easy the peasy. Cake. That's Piece right. the cake. So, we opened up our car and we looked at it. It's like, where's the battery? <laughs> So I was like, wait, how do I put the battery in? There's all these pieces and all this stuff on top of it. Wait, no, you just it's, pop the hood. It's sitting right there. No, it's not that easy. And uh, so my wife and I, because of YouTube, see, back in the days, you didn't have YouTube. So now we have YouTube. So we're like, we're going to take advantage of this. So we put our car and you're making mod of our car. And how do you change the battery? And I'm telling you, it's a chore to change the battery. You have to take this piece off. You have to take this piece off. You have to replace this piece. Was it still under the hood somewhere? It was just hidden? Oh, yeah. It's oh, just okay. down below underneath like all the air vents and the, the filters and all of this stuff. It's my, just the strangest my thing. My battery's not even under the hood anymore. Sometime in, in the room. last five years, they moved it. So it's not like it used to be. No. And so changing the battery. So anyway, so we're out there and we're sweating. And I and I looked down at myself and it took me two hours to change a battery, which it should only take 15 <laughs> minutes. I mean, it's one of the easiest things in the world you could do. And But it took forever. And I'm just literally dripping. I mean, like down my leg, down my back, down my face. I mean, literally like a faucet because it was like, it was the one time, it was at night, but it was the one time that the humidity came like real heavy. Yeah. And it just, and it's like, I'm not going to stop now. I just, just kept going. And, um, but man, that was a challenge. Please so. tell me it worked. Yeah. So anyway, so we got it, we put it on and we started it and it worked. That's great news. Yeah. So I didn't have to have a, my mechanic come out or get under warranty and, and electrical and all that. So, so now you out. can go see your friend at the car dealer again, at, yeah. the, at their car rental place again. Oh yeah. Drop, a, drop, drop it the off. car back off. Yeah. And all bless right. them. Yeah. Oh, that's the other thing I asked. So I said, well, I'm probably not going to need it as for as many days. So I could, I bring it back early and then get refunds. Oh no, we don't do that, sir. We won't give you a refund. What you pay is what you get. So I was like, wait, why not? And you, it makes no sense. If I'm bringing it back early, you can, re you can re oh. put it out again, but I didn't say anything. I just smiled. <laughs> And what's the name of this car rental place? I'm not going to say. <laughs> Zergo. I'm not going to say exactly where yeah, it's at, though. Yeah, you probably yeah. shouldn't do that. Yeah, don't go there. But, um, anyway. <laughs> Unless you just want to love on somebody. That, yeah, just go with the right mentality. Day. Yeah. But I yeah, mean, yeah. we did bless her. And um, Christine was there. And she left smiling. And, and I went out of my way to bless her. And, you know, speak life into her and encourage her. And don't bring that in. And I just think, as a Christian... We have to have that mentality. You know, we talked about this morning, having a blast. We have to have the mentality to always have joy, always be smiling. We just, we, if we allow the world to get to us, it's just, it's horrible. That's not what God wants. He doesn't want us to be like the world. He wants us to be light and different than the world. He wants us to be happy and joyful, knowing that God's in control of everything. And uh, we just have to be reminded of that. So anyway, this, this was a challenge, both to put the battery in to be joyful and then also to get the actual car rental to be joyful. So it worked out good. God's good. What a challenge. Yeah. But it's fun. I mean, it, I got to talk about it, you know, and everybody got to hear what I went through. You got through. to share the story. Yeah. Everyone oh. went through. And the challenge, we all face challenges. Right. Consider it pure joy. Yeah. We face it. I mean, that's life. So the, you just, when you leave your house, Leave your house with the attitude that I'm not going to give in to the world's circumstances. I'm not going to give in to the negativity. I'm not going to give in to the world trying to deceive you. 
Just say, no, I'm going to speak life. I'm going to bring light. I'm going to bring joy. I'm going to love people. I'm actually going to shut up and not say anything. It's a challenge. And if you don't prepare yourself before you leave the door, nine times out of 10, you're going to fall flat. Yeah. It is. It's true. And so I think by me preparing myself, looking at the reviews and just knowing ahead of time, I think it helped me. And then people ask, well, if you looked at the reviews, why would you do that? Well, I looked at Hertz's reviews as well, and they were bad. And I looked, I'm seriously, Hertz was bad and, and, and Enterprise, they're all bad. They're all bad. I think the car rental place has a bad rap. They do. So that was my justification to continue to go to this place. I've learned my lesson though. So <laughs> unless God says, I want you to be punished again, son. And um, I have another lesson to teach you. So I would like you to go here. Then I might go, but you know, God would have to actually talk to me. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's fun. Yeah. Anything fun happen with you? Well, we got to hang out for the last like three days in a row was, and then we took one day off and now we're back. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Friday night. That yeah. was, uh, got to hang out with you guys and broke bread and broke bread, jacuzzi. enjoyed the pool. Yeah. And then Saturday we had an amazing gathering of men, uh, you know, the community, <clears throat> the Lake Nona men all got together and, uh, man, what a turnout. Bless. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. And we're, it's funny cause we're like, we're going over the same things. We're going over the podcast, yeah. going through the book of John. Yeah. And it's just been, it's just been a lot of fun. We're a little, we're a little farther behind the podcast meets weekly and, you know, the men's group meets yeah. monthly. So John it'll, four versus John 10. Yeah. 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 So the podcast, it'll take us, you know, three years to get through John, the no. men's group. It's going to take us, uh, I don't know how many years, but many it's all, it's all good. We're going to get go through this, man. Are you looking up to see how many chapters are in John? Yeah, yeah. I could probably well, I tell know you it was 21, but I'm just trying to. <laughs> I'm counting the shows, not no, the actual chapters. No, most books, I probably couldn't tell you how many chapters there are, but John, I, John, I happen to know the answer too. So we might, uh, we might just do one chapter one day. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Try to make this. So work. we're going to be speaking of John. We're going to be in chapter ten today. We're, we yeah. finished up chapter nine. Yes, last week, and um, so this week we should be able to get to thirteen. John ten one through thirteen. We should be able by to. when? By, no, by the end of the day. Oh, by the end of the day. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. You sure? I, no, well, I don't we'll know. See. We'll see. Well, um, however, God leads. <laughs> our show title today is "Why Do We Wander?" Yeah, what a question! Huh? It is. Why do we wander? I know the answer. Do you? Yeah, but I had to go through this whole st series or show to figure it out. Yeah, and at the end of the show, we'll tell you why you wander. There you go. But not until then. No. So you have to you have to stay tuned to the end. But I think you'll figure it out. You know, we always talk about we should probably we should share our social media stuff yeah. up front in, right, case, in case people code. get busy. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we should do that. We got shirts made. Like we got no. These, yeah, we got these like uh, Riot Podcast shirts. We got merch. We got merch now, or well, is no, it just, just for us? us. Oh, but okay. it, we're gonna have it where it's uh, what is it called? Embroidered. Embroidered. Yeah. yeah, and we have the website on there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, because a lot of people have always asked me. They see my shirt. I've actually had conversations with people. Yeah. About my shirt. It like, opens up. I wear it. The t-shirt. Public. Yeah. yeah. And then I always do, oh yeah, right podcast. Hey. But now I have it. They don't have to ask me. They can just see it. Have we talked to our, our listeners about the, the Riot podcast at sea? Have we mentioned that yet? No, the one in Aruba? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have that. We're gonna label it. We should podcast. wear our new shirts yeah, we when should. we do the do the podcast I, at sea. I hope it fits you. I got you a large. You don't fit you. It uh, should fit. Okay. Unless it's, a, it's if it's slim fit, then yeah. we're in trouble. I don't think so. It fits me, mine does. So okay. It should fit you. We should be good. Yeah. I anyway. Hope so. It's Ben Hogan. The Riot Podcast at Sea. That's got a nice ring to it. He was a golfer. Yeah, he was. Is he still alive? I don't think I he think is. So. I don't think so either. He's like with Arnold. You know what? Let's pray before we jump into this. Yeah. Forgive okay? us, Lord, for... No, we didn't do anything wrong. Not yet. We're just being fun. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> it's coming, I'm sure. All right. Lord, we uh, we love you. We thank you. We, uh, we we give you the show now, Father. We just ask that as we, we go through this book of uh, John chapter 10, and read this amazing story, Lord, that uh, we would see it with new eyes today, that we would uh, uh, be drawn closer to you and, and just maybe see a, a glimpse of a better glimpse of who you are through this story that uh, that you were sharing with us, which is just incredible. So, Father, we uh, we ask you to bless our listeners. Uh, keep them safe if they're driving and listening to this, Lord. If they're they're at home, I pray that they would be uh, maybe jump on YouTube and enjoy the 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 humorous uh, time that we have together. So we do believe in having fun, Lord, and we 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 believe that you want us to be joyful in what we do. Yeah. And uh, so we just ask you to help us do that now. 
Um, but most importantly, help us to just speak truth. We love you. We thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. John 10. John 10. Let's do one through 10, I, think I believe. A lot of people know John 10, 10. So we're going to give John 10, 10 some context yeah. today. Well, a lot of people know one half or the other of John 10. Yeah, they like skip the other half of it. Yeah, yeah, but it's like one <laughs> verse that has two parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're both important. Very important. All right. All Last right. week's show, we finished our discussion on John 9 and the blind men that Jesus put in mud. Remember, he spit in the, spit in the, the yeah. sand and made mud, put yeah. it in his eyes. I and love he it. Could it see. Epic. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. It was a great show on, the, on showing the progression of how we were all once blind to Jesus. Then, as over time, as Jesus reveals himself to us, we start to see him more clearly where intimacy with him begins. Yeah, and I think it was really, if you, if you didn't hear those shows, go back to both of them, John 9 and John, because we kind of carried them over. Yeah. And it was it's an awesome illustration of kind of our journey with God. And uh, we, you know, God used that as something that we were able to explain. So yeah, go through awesome. that in, in talking about intimacy and so forth. I think great. it was episodes 91 and 92, if that makes yeah. it easier to find. Yeah. <clears throat> this week, we will be in John 10, which focuses on the image of sheep, sheepfolds, and shepherds. Have it, you ever seen a sheep? Yeah. You ever been up close? I mean, wild, like sheep that are out in the back? Yeah, bottom? I'm pretty sure. What did you, what was your first ex- in, impression? Uh, they were dirty. Very dirty. Yeah. <laughs> did they have like poop all over their butt? They're, and they're gross. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're gross. Um, well, my first thought, the first, I think the first time I saw them, I'm like, um, I don't want to wear that sweater. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's gross. Yeah. yeah. The first one of mine was, I was out, I was in England somewhere, one of the castles and we were out on the, the, you know, the, the grassy knoll area or whatever. The grassy knoll. And the sheep were all over. And I went up there and I'm telling you, they smelt bad. Yeah, it's awful. And they had all yucky, whatever. I was like, man, that thing needs to be shaven. And then poop like crazy built up all over their fur. So not a pretty and that's sight. What I, and that's what we wear. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what hit me too when yeah. I saw them. Okay. I'm like, I hope they wash that first. Yeah. Okay. A thousand um, times. Where okay. was I? Oh, it's- a rural in the Eastern image. So yeah. what, what we mean by that? It's like, kind of drawing us back to first century, right? When, Jesus' time and what, what, I mean, of course. When you he, read the Bible, you picture. have to read it from a Jewish perspective. Yeah. If you're reading the Bible, thinking America perspective, you're missing what sense. the Bible says. That's right. So we have to understand it from the Eastern culture mindset. Mm. That's where it was coming from. Yeah. Wow. So you're saying that context matters, Pete? Is that what uh, you're trying to say? Very much so. All right. There's an image that can say a great deal about us today, even in our urban industrialized world. Yeah, so, so we're going we to bring still the sheep, tie it in, right? We're bringing the sheep to the to the modern generation. That's what we're going to do today. We're bringing. Careful how you say. We're don't gonna, say that too fast. I know, right? Bring, <laughs> Paul used this image when admonishing the spiritual leaders in the church at Ephesus. You can see that in Acts twenty verse twenty eight. The truths that cluster around the image of the shepherd and the sheep are found throughout the Bible, and they are important to us today. The symbols that Jesus used helps us to understand who he is and what he wants to do for us. In John 10, we will see three declarations that Jesus made about himself. First, he is the door. Second, he is the good shepherd. And lastly, he is the son of God. Yeah, so this week, if we have time, we're going to, we'll for sure get, he is the door. Uh, we'll cover part of He's the Good Shepherd. The next week, we'll pick back up on the Good Shepherd good. and finish up that, and then we'll get into the Son of God. Awesome. All right, so let's read John 10, um, ESV version, verses 1 through 10, and uh, let's unpack this declaration of being the door. I love it. All right, I'll read the text. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Keep in mind, this is Jesus speaking. Yeah. To him, the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So when- by name, Johnny, Susie, Harry, <laughs> Babish, Wooly. Yeah. Anyway, when he was brought out of his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. That's so cool. A stranger They will not follow, but they will flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers. So remember, this is the words of Jesus. So what we're hearing right now is what Jesus spoke. This figure of speech Jesus used with them. This isn't part. This is John (laughs) Hattie. So yeah, if you're following along with us, so uh, yeah, you'll see the words in red. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So there's John giving you a little context. Mm -hmm. So Jesus again said to them, 
Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Wow. That's such a powerful statement. So uh, again, a little background to the story is this, this grew out of the, the conf- confrontation Jesus had with the Jewish leaders following the casting out of the blind man in John 9. So uh, this is the carrying, this is a, you know, it's carrying on the conversation. So last, last time that we studied in John 9, Jesus is talking about light and, you know, he was using the festival of the lights and, and he was just bringing a sermon into it. So now he shifts it a little bit. So now he's done talking about light and darkness. Now he's changing the scene and he's now talking about the shepherds and sheep. So I always ask the question, well, why did he do that? So what's your thoughts? Why he did that? Da, 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 da. I don't know, Pete. I well, we'll go to the I'm, discussion. Question. I mean, I love the, I just love the picture. I mean, yeah. I don't want to just cheat and use your words. I was trying to come up with my own. Oh, it's okay. Use my but, words. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, is there a deeper meaning to that? There is, though. but I'm sure there is. All yeah. right. Anyway, um, the Jewish leader's mind uh, to, because to the Jewish leader's mind, uh, the shepherd could be any type of leader, uh, whether spiritual or a political person. And people looked on the king and prophets also as shepherds. Jesus meets us right where we are in the language that we best understand. So, I think there's a, so their language, yeah. so they would understand when he says this, this would put a picture in their mind that they could understand. They'd be like, oh, okay, I get it. And he did the same thing with the, the light and darkness. So it's like he's taking what they're seeing and physically knowing. So he's probably sitting there and he probably is pointing off in the distance uh, a shepherd bringing his sheep into the fold. And so trying to explain that. And so many, so what every at night, so the shepherds would go by day into the, into the fields, they would walk, they would go different. And then at night they would bring them into a pen, you know? So there's a walled pen. Um, You did get a picture of that. If you're online, you can see it um, on YouTube. We have it put up. So like a pen and, and many different shepherds would come, they would almost rent out their space, right? So they would come, they would, they would put in their, uh, their sheep there, and then they would lay in front of the, the hole to get out. So that's kind of, that's normal back in that time. So they understood the shepherd mentality, but they also looked at their leaders as shepherds. Hmm. And so they would see them as, because a shepherd was an oversight, an overseer, right? So they oversee, they protected, they're, they're the, the political leaders, they're the people that, are, that had influence, um, you know, but a shepherd back in Jesus days, an actual physical shepherd was not, you know, they were dirty. They weren't, you know, they weren't like that. And in G- remember David was a shepherd, Yes, you know, and they're not, and, they weren't really like held up to high esteem in the, in the culture, but they, they did understand from, from my research and from studying it, they saw the political leaders, but they recognized leadership also as a shepherd. So they were able to take the actual physical and they were actually able to see like, Mm. you know, they were a shepherd. So that was common during that time. So we've, we've taken that and and have done that to pastors or overseers and said, they're the shepherds of the flock, but it's, it didn't come because we came up with it. It came because that's how they believed. And that's what they thought of back in that time. And so Jesus knew that. And so Jesus was going ahead and, you know, given this illustration during that time. Yeah. When I think of political leaders today, I don't picture them as a shepherd. A good one. Maybe we should. Yeah. Yeah. A good one. I mean, if there's a good one that was doing God's work yeah, and they were actually doing the will of God, then you would see them as a shepherd because they would have a flock. They would have people that they're leading and they're protecting and they're protecting. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. What a great picture that is. All right. Number two. Yeah. Jesus opened his sermon with a familiar illustration, one that every listener would understand. The sheep, the sheepfold was not usually an enclosure made of rocks or was usually an enclosure made of rocks. If you you saw that picture, if you were on YouTube with an opening for the door. So we kind of draw a picture. It's got like this. It's you could be a square. It could be a round, but there's like a gap, an entrance, a doorway that doesn't have a door. And that's where the shepherd would be. Yeah. The shepherd or helper would guard the flock or flocks at night by lying across that opening that we just discussed. In the morning, the shepherds would come 
call their sheep and assemble their own flocks. This is really cool. Each sheep recognized its own master's voice. So what we were talking about this morning, there might be, there might be multiple flocks inside that pen. And as you had somebody guarding that, that door all night, and then the shepherds would come up and call their sheep. And you were talk, talking about how that would happen. And, yeah. and you said you saw it. You well, saw this that, somewhere. The only place that I, because, you know, I've traveled a lot, but the one place that made me think of this when I, it made me bring back into like Jesus's day was when I was in Morocco and, and not in the main cities, but out in the wilderness where the little villages are, you would see shepherd and sheep everywhere. And um, I remember I was traveling one time going to the small town and I saw them up and there was two shepherds, you know, with their sheep and they were going. And I pointed to the person that I was with to this big pen that was up on the side of the mountain hill there. And he said, oh, yeah, that's, that's a, where they put the sheep at night. I was like, oh, really? I said, do the shepherds lay? They go, oh, yeah, the shepherds lay right in the front and they do all that whole thing. And uh, I was like, wow. So they gave me an actual picture that's still going today. They still use this today. Really? And then I went on to the city and they were showing me how they made their bread. I was telling you about that. And then they do figs. I mean, it was like going back into biblical times during that. So, yeah, so that's that. But here's the key. One of the things that he said to me, and he says, oh, yeah, I know one of the shepherds. And I said, oh, yeah. And he goes, yeah, what he does is his, the sheep know his voice really well. And he's trained them to be single file. So when he's ready to leave in the morning, he would call out his sheep and then they would get into a single file line and walk out the door with them. And, and I thought about that. I was like, wow, but it's, it's very true. I mean, this is not just, you know, today and to yesterday, they know is, they know the, the shepherd's voice. I'm picturing a preschool teacher like, right. you know, teaching that, you know, they get to know the kids and at the beginning of the, the, the year it's chaos, but by the end of the year, they kind of get to know them and they'll, and they have a routine and boom, they'll get in a single, I mean, but single it, file line. It's like, you know, I look at it this way. So it's like, all right, you're on a, you haven't talked to somebody in years, yeah. right? You yeah. just haven't talked to them for 15 years. And then they called you out of the blue. And then they started talking, hello, man, how are you doing? And immediately you recognize who they are. Why? Because you know their voice. And, and, and if you didn't know them that well, you might say, who is this? You know, if you didn't know them that well. But if you had an intimate, like say, for instance, a high school person or something, someone that you hung out with every single day, right? You knew them very well. You had a relationship with them. You spent time with them. And then they called you out of the blue and you heard them. <clears throat> you would know their voice. Right. But the people that we don't know well, the people that, I mean, these shepherds spent all day with the sheep. Everywhere the sheep went, the shepherds went, right? I mean, they let them go out into the field. They let them go out and graze, but the shepherd was always close by. And, and so they get to know the sheep really well. So you think they're talking to the sheep or singing to the sheep I'm or sure. something? How, how else would they would know the voice, right? They just, they're yeah. always, they're always, I mean, they're probably as they're brushing them or as they're talking to them or whatever. They're probably just, yeah, yeah. always. So, I mean, but Jesus is leading them somewhere. Right. right. And so we're getting into that, but that's what Jesus is leading. So, all right. All right. Start. Number three, the true shepherd comes in through the door and the helper recognizes him. The thieves and robbers could never enter through that door. So they have to climb over the wall and enter the fold through deception. But even if they did get in, they would never get the sheep to follow them for the sheep follow only the voice of their own shepherd. The false prophets can never lead the sheep. So they must steal them away. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot in the, just that thought wow. process, but I mean, so a shepherd would have his, his staff, right? So he would have his staff, he would have means to protect himself. Um, and the shepherd's mentality was at all costs, he's protecting his sheep. So that's just how they were raised. They were, they were tough, right? They were just, they were people. And then if you're a robber or a thief, you knew that, Hey, if I try to, you know, I wouldn't have to kill this guy. Right. So I don't want to deal with that. I wanted to go around that. And so then they want to, you know, if they're going to steal the sheep, they're going to have to do it the hard way. They're going to have to do it at night. They're going to have to jump over. They're going to have to do something to try to steal the sheep. Um, that's the same thing. Then what we're talking about is the false prophets. And so this is kind of what Jesus is getting at. He's like, you know, if it's, if it's true, if it's right, if it's good, then you're going to know the voice. Hmm. If it's not, it's going to, there's going to be deception. There's going to be manipulation. There's going to be, some way, somehow to try to steal from, you know, your flock. So that's kind of what it is. But Jesus is the true shepherd and any other person religion claiming to be Jesus is false. So, I mean, I, this is, this is what Satan did. So Satan basically said, I, I can't 
stop these people from believing in a God, right? So I'm going to confuse them. I'm going to create all these different religions and make them think all the religions are the same so that I can manipulate them and get them to believe something that's not the true and living God. And then they're going to just basically live with religious mentality. They're going to live just like the world, but they're going to do a religious thing to make themselves feel better. Yeah. And so that's what happened. And so Jesus is looking at these Jews, you know, these leaders, and he's basically saying, listen, you've, this is a deception of Satan. This is not, this is not what I planted in Abraham. This is not what I called you to be. You've created this in your own image. You've made your own religion. And I'm telling you right now, you're a fake. You're false. And I am the true door. I am the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And that's what we're getting at. So, you know, if you're, that's, you know, a lot of people say, well, all these religions are all the same. Uh -uh. Jesus is going to prove right here once and for all that he is the only door into heaven. There's no other door. All those other religions are not that. And Jesus is telling you and telling all those other religions, listen, come to me, come into my flock, come share, come share and fellowship with me. I want to, I want to be your shepherd. And so that's what he's telling these guys. And that's what we're getting at. Wow. Any other thoughts? Well, a couple of things. You were talking early on in that discussion about uh, how the shepherd had the, had a staff and protected, you yeah. know, he had means to protect himself. It reminded me of David. And, you know, we always see, everybody knows the story of David and Goliath. Yeah. Well, David shares that it was because he had practice yeah. fending off bears and lions yeah. with the, with this. So it's not the first time he threw a stone. Yeah, killed you know? him with his bare hands. And stuff. Yeah, God was already preparing yeah. him. So I was thinking about that. But then, that's the shepherd. That's the right shepherd. And it's not a coincidence that that's in the Bible. And it's not a yeah. coincidence that the Messiah came through the lineage of David. Of David. Yeah. It all set it up so that we can understand this story that we're reading today. God knew what he was doing. We, we were listening to a message Saturday and uh, the, the pastor we we're listening to described in, as he was going through, we were in John four and he's like, look, the old Testament and the whole Bible is just collapsing right oh. here. It's like, it's all coming together yeah. where it all made. And like, it's just the whole to understand the new Testament. You really have to understand oh, the yeah. old Testament too. Oh, yeah. Otherwise you, again, you're taking it out of context. All the illustrations that Jesus gives is because of the old it's Testament. All old Testament it's stuff. all yeah. pulling from the old Testament. Yeah. So I, we're, when we say, well, I, you know, I'm a new Testament kind of guy. I don't need to read them. No, I mean, man, the, the more, you know, your Bible as a whole, the more yeah. all of this starts to make sense. I've asked so many Christians if they ever read through the old Testament, majority of them said they have not. Yeah. Oh, they Psalms, Proverbs, yeah, maybe, maybe a little Genesis. Yeah. yeah. Not much. Yeah. All right. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, boom, 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 boom. Four. Yeah. And you are, there's something else I wanted to say about the false prophets, but if it comes back to me, I'll share it later. All right. Jesus is making his claim clear that the fold he is talking about is the nation of Israel. The Gentiles are the other sheep. They are not of the fold of Israel. So, when, so let me just clarify. Yep. So we're jumping ahead a little bit. So basically when we say Jesus is making his claim clear that the fold he is talking about is the nation of Israel, that is in verse 16. So in verse 16, it actually says other sheep. So we didn't cover that this time. We're going to cover that next time, next, but next that's week. kind of what it's talking okay. about. All right. So I just want to clarify that. Excellent. So the other sheep are the Gentiles. So I just want to make sure. So we, so Jesus is clearly telling these Jews that he's talking about the fold is Israel itself. Okay. Okay. Which is good. I mean, Cause he's talking to the Pharisees. Yes. He's trying to drive yes. this message home yes. to the Pharisees. When Jesus came to the nation of Israel, he came the appointed way, just as the scriptures had promised. Every, again, back to the Old Testament. Every true shepherd must be called of God and sent by God. If he truly speaks God's word, the sheep will hear his voice and not be afraid to follow him. Yeah, and I, I took this when I was reading through this, um, again, called. You know, it's like, you know, in John 17, we'll get to that. It's, you know, it's talking about I you I have... You know, I've, you know, everyone that you've given me, none of them have fallen away. So it's, it's God calls them. God called the disciples. God calls me. He calls you. And, um, you know, we are, we are all called of God to, to live for him, to love him, to, to share our gifts and our talents and to be joyful and to do the things that God's asking us to do. And so he's telling the, 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 you know, these leaders here, Hey, I've called Israel to, to be my light right? The beacon of light on the hill. I've called them to, to bring the Messiah. I gave them a purpose. That's what it is. But you've made it, Pharisees. 
you know, a, 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 a dung, basically you've, you brood a viper, you whitewash fool. I mean, he, you've made it disgusting. You've mm-hmm. made it ugly. And I am the true shepherd. I am the one, what I created, what I called you to be is what I am. I am that I am. I've called you to love. I've called you to not do religion. I've called you to worship me. Um, you know, Billy Graham once said, he said, uh, what God is doing today is calling people out of the world for his name, whether they come from the Muslim world or the Buddhist world or the Christian world or the non-believing world. They are members of the body of Christ because they've been called by God. They may not even know the name of Jesus, but they know in their hearts they need something that they don't have. And they turn to the only light that they have and they think they are saved and they're going to be with us in heaven at some day. Hmm. And so remember how that, that whole, I've never met anybody per se that has not known Jesus or heard about Jesus. Um, I've heard people say, I've heard the name, but I don't know anything about it. I've, yeah. been, I've talked to people that way, especially when I was in India. But everybody said, well, what about those people, those pygmies in the middle of Africa or, or, or where that was in New Zealand area or somewhere over there? Um, what about those people? Papua New Guinea. I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about those people? Well, I believe that God's, God's going to show up some way. I mean, if the rocks cry out, they're going to cry out. Yeah. Some way, somehow, God's going to reveal himself. Reveal to himself. Yep. And they're going to start worshiping a creator, a God that they believe that's in their heart. And God's going to show up. And so, but he also, he also uses us to be his hands and his feet. So, all right. Well, Jesus is about to get re- even more real with these uh, Jewish leaders. Yeah. Because the Jewish leaders were blind to the truth and still did not understand his symbolic language, he gives them a practical application. That's in hilarious to me. So 10. he's basically rolling his eyes again at them and said, listen, let me make this very Come simple on. for you. Yeah, you know, Jesus didn't roll his eyes. Uh, I don't know. In, he's loving. There had to be sarcasm somewhere. <laughs> Right. Sarcasm is my love language. That's, that's my wife. Yeah. I'm working on it. Please, yeah. please pray for me. Okay. So Jesus again said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. I, I think he's saying it this way. Whenever he says truly, truly before he's like, listen here, you big dummy. Listen, <laughs> listen. That's what he's doing. Listen I, I, in yeah. a board way. I say to you, I am, I am the, the door, door of the sheep. Got it. That's what he said. I am the door of the sheep. <laughs> he may have even sung it a little bit. I'm sure. I mean, he's he's saying it with force here. Yeah. It's like, hello. All right. Yep. All who come before me are thieves. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief... However, I added that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So it's, it's almost two fold. So, so it's almost like he's, he's making this statement. He's breaking it down to the most basic form for they can understand. Right. He's yep. just telling them they comprehend that there's uh, many false prophets that have come before. They comprehend that um, there's people out there claiming to be light that are trying to deceive people, uh, destroy them and kill them. They get that. They yeah. understand that, right? And so he's basically saying that. And he's also telling them, listen, the thing comes to still kid red, but I've come that you may have life. He's telling them that, um, and I already lost my train of thought. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, and this has happened like three times to me this morning. <laughs> so go on, because I already forgot. My no, that's all right. Did you did you want to have anything else in that discussion of statement five you wanted to cover before we move on? Probably do if I okay. remember. Well, but hey, notice Jesus says okay. twice to good. them, he is the door of the sheepfold and makes it possible for the sheep to leave the fold, religion of Judaism, to enter his flock. Um, so basically he's telling them, hey, listen, your religion, you can leave. I'm, I'm making it possible for you right now to leave your Judaism, your flock, and come unto my flock. He's telling them that. The leaders threw the once blind man out of the synagogue, but Jesus led him out of Judaism into his flock of God. So Jesus took the one that was rejected by the people, and he says, I, I accept you. And that's just been God's motto from the very beginning. So you know, he's, he's looking at your life and he said, well, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I have it all together. I'm making a lot of money. I have brains. I'm intelligent. I have an amazing wife. I have all this house. I don't need God. I'm doing fine without him. Right. And that's what they say, but they don't realize that they, they've gained the whole world, but they lost their soul. 
and, and they don't realize that um, there is going to be consequences to the decision that they've made here on this world. They don't, they don't realize that every knee will bow, every tongue confess before God. And so Jesus is telling these Jews here, he says, listen, I'm giving you an opportunity right now. I'm physically asking you to come to me. I'm telling you. And, and, and there's going to be a moment in that person's life that thinks they have it all together that it's, I'm going to say, come to Jesus meeting. There's going to be a time or something that's going to happen in your life that, you know, it's going to be an awakening. You have two choices. Either you can like keep fighting and keep trying to figure it out. Well, my back's against the wall. And I've heard this many times I've been up and I've picked myself back up and I kept going and I kept fighting and I've made myself the way I am today. Nobody else has helped me. I did it myself. And, uh, and every time I get knocked down, I get back up. Well, you've, you've continued to con do it on yourself, but Jesus is saying in those moments, in those times that you've been knocked down, said, so listen, I want to carry your weight and your burden for you. I want to provide for you. I want to, I want to give you an abundant life. I want to give you a life that's filled with joy and peace. I want to do all the hard work for you. I just want you to love me and worship me and serve me. And, and the byproduct of doing that is I'm going to provide, I'm going to open doors for you. I'm going to, I'm going to lead you into greener pastures. I'm going to give you hope. I'm going to give you peace. I'm going to give you joy in your life. I'm going to, I'm going to help direct your path. You don't have to do this any longer. And, and, but we reject that a lot of times. It's like, no, I have to feel like I have to do something. I have to, I have to make this happen. I have to do all these things. And that's kind of where the Jew, the Jewish leaders were. They're like, no, we, we are, you know, by the book, we, we pray five times a day. We do this, we do this, we do this, we do this, we do this. The same thing with those leaders. I've done all this on my own, but Jesus is saying, listen, I did not create you to do that. Right. I created you to worship me. I created you to be my sheep. I created you to allow me to be your shepherd. I created to protect you, to love you, to guide you, to direct you, to bless you, to overwhelm you. I created you to have no burden and no weight. I created you to have eternal peace and joy. That's what I created. I wanted you to have an abundant life. By you doing it all yourself, you have stresses, you have worries, you have fears, you have anxieties. You have anger, you have outbursts, you have all these things that I never created you to have. And so that life isn't the very best life. And you Jews, you Jewish leaders are condemning me and are condemning yourself and are filled with hate. And I have never created you to be that. And so I'm giving you now the opportunity to come to me. And people, we see evidence of that all the time in this world. I mean, we, we look at people that were like, man, they have it all. And then, and they take their own life Yeah, you know, because th there's, we're created. <laughs> we have that God sized hole, right? That he only, he can fill That's and we it. can try to fill with everything else. That's and it. you're just never going to be happy. No, you may have moments, you may have glimpses of, of pleasure and happiness and, and that stuff, but you're never going to have joy. Yeah. I've always used it as a wave that never ends. You know, anybody that surfers out there know that, that once you get a really good wave and you get into that pipe and you're doing, it's like, you never want it to end. It's just like, it's, Oh my gosh, this is an incredible feeling. It, it, is, with Jesus, it never ends. Yeah. But with, when you're doing it yourself, it always ends. It always ends. And sometimes it ends so badly that you're hitting the rocks and the coral below. Going to crash oh, on hurts. the shore. Oh, it hurts. You know why Jesus was trying to tell the Pharisees to get away from religion? Why? Because religion sucks. It sucks. It does nothing good for you. I don't know. I pray that people listen to this show. They get that. I pray at the end of the day, they can tell somebody really quick the difference between religion and relationship with Jesus. And that's what we're getting in here. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah that, what a goal. All yeah. right. Notice that the shepherd doesn't stop just by, it doesn't stop just leading the sheep out. He also leads them in Pete. Yeah. They become a part of one flock, which is his church. Speaking of Jesus, he is the door of salvation. John 10, nine, those who trust him enter into the Lord's flock and fold. And they have a wonder, the wonderful privilege of going in and out and finding pasture. Man, what a, what a awesome thought process, you know? And again, when you keep in mind that the shepherd actually is the door of the fold, this is the image becomes really real. I mean, it's like, all right. So at night, Jesus is protecting you. So the, the Bible talks about that, the, the, you know, there's angels surrounding our house everywhere. God is always protecting you. God is guiding and directing you. 
And that during the day or whatever, that God is saying, all right, go live your life, go live in freedom, go live in abundance. Um, but just live to bring me glory. Just live to, to elevate others above yourself, live to be a blessing, <laughs> live as I lived. You know, Paul says it, you know, I was just reading this morning in first Corinthians where Paul says, well, imitate me. Well, Jesus says that all the time in a way. He's basically saying, listen, live as I live, do as I do. I'm laying the blueprint out. And what I have is abundant life. What I have is freedom. What I have is a, is a life that has purpose, that has meaning. And, um, and it's in the more important thing is, is when you talk about the purpose and meaning, what Jesus does is that the purpose and meaning is impactful. So you might have purpose and meaning, but it might be not be the impactfulness that only God can give. So God is the one that transforms lives. God is the one that takes a person that is completely at the end of the rope, completely hopeless, and he brings life to them. That is what God does. And right. when you're being used by God, you're doing the exact same thing. But if you're doing it yourself, it's fleeting. You might help the person get off the end of the rope for the day, but they're going to be on the end of the rope the next day. Yeah, God's got a bigger picture. God doesn't do that. That's God right. takes them from the end of the rope and he brings them to the mountaintop. He completely changes everything. So good. <laughs> All right, when you go through the door, you receive life and you are saved. As you go in and out, you enjoy the abundant life that we were just talking about yeah. in the rich pastures of the Lord. His sheep enjoy fullness and freedom. I love that. It, and it, it's our culture just tells us the opposite. It's like, you know, freedom is doing whatever you want to do. This is real freedom. What right? I'm doing, there's a lot of ministry that I'm doing that we've talked about natural discipleship, right? Podcasts and yeah. other things. Yeah. I do a lot of one on one discipleship and a lot of different things. But I am more fulfilled and complete in my life today than I've ever been. And that's what Jesus does. When you're starting to do what God wants you to do and you're doing it his way, you are full. You are completely full. All right. Uh, Jesus not only gave his life for us, but he gives his life to us right now. Yeah. And that's, that, you know, it, it's like um, Jesus, and I think we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but Jesus not only does he in, in this next section, but he not only has he given his life, but he died for us. So, you know, in the sheepfold, we're going to talk about that. North, you know, the shepherds, they go and they sell the sheep to the different yeah, towns, yeah. right? They, they sell their wool. They sell this. They're, Role they're, reversal. They're here. sacrificing. But yeah, Jesus yeah. say, no, I'm going to sacrifice for yeah. the sheep. It's totally different. All right, let's get on the transition table. All right. Now, Jesus moves from the door as his main emphasis to the shepherd, and he makes his second declaration that he is the good shepherd. In, uh, let's read verses 11 through 13. 13 and unpack what the good shepherd, that why he dies for his sheep. So yeah. verses 11, yeah. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hand, or who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Man, that's so true. Yeah, I mean, the word translated good here, it means intrinsically good. It means beautiful and fair. Um, it describes that which is ideal, the model that others may safely imitate. Um, Jesus' goodness was inherent in his nature. To call him good is the same as calling him God. Hmm. Remember in Mark 10 through 17 through 18, it says, and as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must hmm. I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replied to him, says, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. So that's- D Define good, right? <laughs> so I mean, so here it is, you know, that's what- God is. He's good. He's, he's, he's not, the shepherd is good. He's not manipulating you. He's not trying to deceive you. He is good. He is, he is faithful. He is true. And, and it's sometimes hard to believe that because people had bad experiences with religion. Yep. It's hard to believe that because they've seen other religions or other things that are out there where people aren't good and they're false and they're, and they're wolves and they've done things to deceive them. But I'm telling you, you come to know Jesus, he's not like that. He's good and you can trust him. Such a good point. Yeah, people really have been burned. But this is this is the game changer. Once you realize and, and acknowledge that he is good and you trust him and that's your mindset on him, everything changes. Yeah. Jesus in this section of reading describes four different ministries that the good shepherd does. In verses 11 through 13, the good shepherd dies for his sheep. Normally, the sheep die for the shepherd, but now the good shepherd dies for the sheep. 
Five times in this sermon, Jesus clearly affirmed the sacrificial nature of his death. He did not die as a martyr, killed, killed by him. men. No, he died as a substitute, willingly, so key, willingly laying down his life for us. Yeah, it's like <clears throat> people that don't understand the context of the Old Testament don't fully grasp this. You know, sacrifice the the was the key to salvation, the key to their sins, and and to you know getting them to be able to have any fellowship with the Father, right? So man messed it up, and you know man went on its way, and and God kept pursuing man to give them opportunities to get repent of their sins, to be in fellowship with Him, and He kept doing that, and. Ultimately, man couldn't fulfill what God, what the holiness of God deserved. I mean, God had a, a standard and it was holiness. It was perfection. And so he sent his son, Jesus, right? He sent his son as the good shepherd to, to live a life that's holy and that's pleasing. And he looked on the sheep that constantly messes everything up. He looked on his creation and he saw that no matter what, they would fall short. No matter what, they're going to wander off. No matter what, they're not going to get it. Mm. So I need to make a way for them to come to me. And, and so he sends his son to live this life as the shepherd, to live this life of holiness, of perfection, and then one day die so that the sheep can now have fellowship with the shepherd and God. And so it's, it's like he had to do this. He had to, he had to live this life. He had to protect, he had to give these illustrations and so forth. So that one day he was going to, you know, we're going to be in his fold for all eternity Amen. because without it, we cannot be in that fold. We, we are separated from a holy God. So, all right. All right. Thoughts? Yep. Nope. No. A couple more. A couple right. more. We'll wrap up. <clears throat> the fact that Jesus said that he died for, for the sheep must not be isolated from the rest of the biblical teaching about the cross. He also died for the nation of Israel. In John 11, we will unpack this some more. But while the blood of Jesus is sufficient for salvation of the world, it is e efficient yeah. only for those who believe. So it only works for those who believe in it. Yeah. So, I mean, again, <clears throat> you, you cannot be saved... Um, there's no salvation in, in sacrificing a sheep. Okay. There's only sacrifice. There's only salvation in sacrificing the shepherd. And so you cannot be saved any longer by doing anything on your own. There's no way to get to heaven. You are not holy in us. There's no way to get it. <clears throat> there's only one person that ever walked this earth that lived a holy and perfect life. And, and it's only through him that we get it. Listen, if Jesus walked the perfect life and then died and that was it, he's not the good shepherd. He can't take care of his flock, but because he rose again on the third day, Amen. he is now the good shepherd. He's given an illustration of things that are going to happen. He's telling them, I'm going to be the sheep and I'm going to be the shepherd. I'm going to be the lion and I'm going to be the lamb. <laughs> I'm both, but I'm doing it because I want my sheep to come into my fold. I want to be their God. I want them to be my kid, my children. I want to love them. And so that's what he's sharing with them. He's trying to help them understand based off of what they already know in the old Testament about the blood and the sacrifice and the sheeps and all these things. They're getting it. They're just not putting it together that he's talking about himself. They just can't comprehend that part. And so Jesus is trying to say, there's no other way to the father. No longer. I've come to bring a new covenant. I've come to, to set things right because it was messed up before. And from this day forward, I'm creating my church, my flock, my people, and Israelites, you can come unto it as well. You're welcome. You're welcome. But you're refusing. You're blind. Hmm. All right. Jesus contrasted himself with the hireling uh, who watched over the sheep only because he was paid to do so. So I'm a mercenary. Yeah. But when there is danger, the hireling runs away while the true shepherd stays and cares for the flock. The key phrase is who owns the sheep or not, who's owned the sheep or not. Um, the good shepherd purchases the sheep with his own life and they are now his. They belong to him because he rose from the grave. Just so you were just talking about Pete and he can now care for them. Again, if he didn't rise, rise from the grave, then he wouldn't be there to care for his, his flock. None of what he's telling them makes sense unless he rises from the grave. Right. 
None of it. So they're they're looking at them, and I, and I can understand where they're at. Their if confusion. They're, if they were not spiritually led, if their eyes weren't open, and he's sharing these hard truths, not going to make any sense. Yeah, they're like, what yeah. are you talking about? So the only thing that makes it make sense is he has to rise from the grave. Yeah. He has to sit at the right hand of the Father. Hmm. But now that he does, he now has his flock. You've given these to me, John 17. We're going to get into that. We're going to talk about that flock. Awesome. All right. All right. Last one. Throughout the Bible, God's people are compared to sheep. And the comparison is a good one. Sheep are defenseless and need the care of the shepherd. They are prone to wander and must most must often be searched for and brought back into the fold. We wander off at times too, because we are made like sheep and are in need of a shepherd. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there's, that's the reason why we've, you know, given this title. It's, you know, we, I am, I am prone to wander. I've, I live, I have my habits. You know, Paul says that we are to discipline our minds. We're to discipline our bodies. We're to, we're to take, you know, take captive those things. We're to um, position ourselves to be in a position of success for God. We're, we're not to go to certain things. We're not to watch certain things. We're not to do certain things to um, cause us to stumble or be in the flesh. But for whatever reason, I get tired or I get weary, or for whatever reason, I get lazy, and um, I decide to give in to my flesh. I decide to um, do things that are contrary to what is right, what is holy, what is perfect, and I wander. And, and, and I, Jesus knows this, and, and I always ask myself, why do I wander? Well, I wander because I'm a sheep. I'm created as an imperfect being made perfect through Jesus Christ mm -hmm. that I can't comprehend, but I'm a wanderer, but I am saved by grace through faith. And it's not anything that I've ever done. And it's a gift that God has given me. And I've accepted this, that I am a wanderer, but I'm also a perfect holy saint in the name of Jesus. And, and it just, it's incomprehensible, but I am a sheep. And the Bible says that I all have fallen short of the glory of God. And I can testify, you know, what Paul says, I am the chief sinner. I get what he's talking about. The closer that I get to Jesus, the brighter that light is, and the more that I see the sin in my own life. And I start recognizing that I wander maybe more than I should. And, and, it's, and it's in those moments of despair that I see myself, that Jesus comes and he just loves on me and says, listen, I paid the price for you. I love you. I forgive you. I am, I am here for you. I'm here to protect you. I'm the good shepherd. And, and I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. And, and I'm telling you, it's incomprehensible. But, but why do we wander? It's, we're sheep. We're dumb. We're not that bright. And, and, and if we think that we're bright and stupid, mm -hmm. if, you look, if you're able to at all see Jesus and all of his glory, if you at all able to see the perfection and the holiness of him, you will come to terms with yourself very quickly. And he will bring you to your knees. And if you haven't been brought to your knees yet, you will be. Because every knee will be bound. Every knee will confess before the Lord. And, and there is going to be a time that you're going to be humbled. There's always somebody better than you. There's always something that's going to take you down a notch. Voice. You know, thoughts, Bob? Yeah, I was just thinking, you, we got to be listening to his voice. I mean, it's when we're not listening to his voice and drawing near to him. The enemy's smart, Pete. The enemy knows us better than we probably know ourselves. And uh, he doesn't tempt us with things that disgust us or, you know, anything. He, he knows our weaknesses. And that's, it's like a fisherman, right? You, you put this, you put a fake fish in front of a, you, you try to make it look like what the fish eats, right? It's something that they're attracted to. Well, Satan knows how to do that with us. And if we're not listening to our shepherd's voice, it's easy to be distracted by uh, a false prophet or, you know, the enemy. So that, and, that's my thought. No, and you're right on. I mean, it's imperative that we discipline ourselves. If, if we're not in the word of God, we're not knowing Jesus. If we're not spending quiet time in worship and prayer, then we're not hearing him. We're not, we're not able to know his voice. Right. And it, everybody knows this. You might find safety in your four walls in your home. But man, minute you get outside into that world, there is destruction. And well, not only that, in the four walls in your home, Satan can get in your brain as well. Sure. He can lie to you and deceive you. 
And you have to know the truth. You have to know what the word of God says, because in those moments of despair or in those moments of wandering, Jesus is going to be saying, hey, I'm right here. This way, son. That's not the best way. I come this way, son. Here, let me help you, son, daughter. And, and, it's, and it's when we know him. And so that's why, you know, Jesus should be every aspect of our life every day. You know, we wake up in the morning, the shepherd's there. We go to lunch there, shepherd's there. The shepherd should always be talking to us. We should always be having conversation with him. That is the relationship. That is not religion. That is us having a conversation with a living God that's real and live. And, and he's loving on you and he's, and he's engaging in you and he wants to have fellowship with you and he wants to take care of you. And so if you're doing that and that's the, that's the relationship part of this thing, you're not going to be in religion. And you're going to know how to navigate when those times of wandering come. So if you're listening now and you have not given your life to the Lord, you can. Just right now in your heart, just confess that you're a sinner. Believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day. And then go and tell somebody that you've given your life to the Lord and start living for him. I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science. God is just saying, just humble yourself. Immediately recognize that you need help. You need the good shepherd. You need, you want to be in the flock. You don't want to be like these Pharisees and, and deny him. You want to pick up your cross and you want to follow him. So just pray, dear Lord, help me today. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to follow you in, in all of your ways. Lord, I believe that you died on the cross and rose again. I believe that you are the savior of the universe. I believe that you are the, the good shepherd. And I believe that your word says that you stand at the door and knock and all we have to do is let you in. And I, Lord, want to let you in now. And so if you said that in your heart, all the angels in heaven rejoiced and, yeah. and we would love to hear from you, Bob, how could they do that? Yeah. First of all, you go to our website, uh, riotpodcast.co.co. Um, there's a no God tab. Just click on there. You can share with us, uh, uh, your, your new journey. And you can also go to our, our social media sites, Twitter, you can go to Facebook, the riot podcast and uh, look at us, look us up there, man. We would love to hear from you. Let us know where you're listening from, like it, share it with a friend. And, uh, for those of you that, uh, you can actually sit at a computer or on your phone and watch us and you're watching us on YouTube, make sure that you sus subscribe and share the channel as well. And again, uh, comments always help the algorithms. It helps us get it out to more people. So if you would take the time to just, man, just make a comment in there, we would really, really appreciate it. Pete, what an amazing show. Yeah. Love this, uh, I mean, the, just the book of John and yeah. all. It's just it's my favorite book yeah. in the Bible. <laughs> what did, what did uh, yeah, Todd Wagner so said? Good. Every book that he every does book is he favorite. studies is favorite book, truth. but it is. Yeah, it should be really. I mean, it yeah. makes sense. It's the one that you're you're diving into. It's the one that you're studying. It's the one that is drawing you closer to the shepherd at yeah. that moment. Yeah. It should be your favorite book. Yeah. So it, it makes complete sense. We can't wait to. Uh, to share more with you next week as we wrap up chapter 10 and uh, can't wait to see you and and uh, and talk this to has you been next the week. Riot so podcast. thank you if you and, like what uh, you God heard bless. Today, have an amazing week of worship leave a comment Peace. and share it with yeah, your friends see you back here next week for another episode of the riot podcast